And I wanted to maybe move a little bit into the idea of uh, of politics and politics. I'm looking at. Okay, now we're about to get in trouble, aren't we? Okay, uh, yeah, I'm looking at politics in the <laughs> United States and also uh, also globally. There seem to be some global trends. So the the two trends that I'm thinking about, and and again, this could be conventional wisdom, maybe not true, but the conventional wisdom is that never have there been more clear-cut divisions in political orientation. And, uh, you know, the term it could be liberal, conservative, left and right. That's one trend is that people may be getting more and more intransigent in their viewpoints to where there is no middle ground, no re- resolution. And then the second trend in politics, and this appears to be something that's also global, is this move toward toward uh, maybe a hyper-nationalism. In other words, uh, uh, something that could be healthy, I support my government, I support my nation, I support my neighbors, now becomes uh, us and them at, to the exclusion of everything else, that, that it's all about this country and uh, makes everything hyper-competitive and especially in an economy where all our interests are really, because of technology, tied together, that seems to be create a dialectic sort of. You know, here in one, one, in one sense, we're all connected. In the other sense, we're totally disconnected. So if that's true, I don't know that it's true, but if it's true, where does the regular regular old human being like me what what do i what do i do here in order to cope with this and find some comfort level with this discussion well wow that's that's a big question and you're right it is um it's it's a major question that we need to answer for our nation, uh, particularly. And you mentioned nationalism, so I think there's a lot to to sort of unpack from from your your question. And um, I, I I got a couple ideas, and I, I, and I, it kind of goes back to something that I, I I talked about just a moment ago. But it has to do with um, the psychological concept of uh, confirmation bias that. W- our group believes a certain thing, and this is the ideology, and this is what we hold on to. Yeah. And anybody that does not believe that is on the outside of the group. So, uh, for me, that's always the dangerous, the danger uh, within this that um, we feel so entrenched, so righteous in our beliefs that the others. Are wrong, and we're not open to hearing a different side and a different yep. uh, viewpoint. And m- I might add, uh, a core counseling uh, value is the idea of empathy to looking to look at it right. from another person's right. point of view. Yeah. And in this um, the frame that you just laid out, that doesn't occur very often. You're with us or you're against us. Right. Um, I'm sure somebody quoted that somewhere. I don't remember that. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> someone from the past, but that was the the phrase. And um, that's problematic in a way because do you really have all the best ideas in your camp? Do you are you oh, really good, good right point. about yeah. everything? And yeah. is it should be exactly this way? And there's no give. There's yeah. no compromise, and you know we we talk. I think we talked about this at one point. The idea of compromise has gotten a bad rap. It's a bad label. Right, right. That you compromise. Oh, now you're a flip flopper or something oh, in that. Right. In That's that a, way. Th- th- at one time, that may have been a strength, finding that middle ground. Now it's oh, yeah. you. You. It still you, is, by the way. You don't <laughs> have. Uh, you don't have the courage of your convictions. You flip flopped. You you caved. You gave in. All those terms we use. Yes, and wow. I mean that's that's a form and uh, of shame. 
of shaming. And and Dan Rose, had, we had a whole episode uh, with Dan, the psych, psycho, psychologist, talking about the idea of shame and how shame, it's used. Yeah. And, and uh, it's used in parenting. It's used throughout. And now it's become sort of a national thing. If you can, if you say something against my ideology, then we'll come back and shame you or even to the w- worst side of humanity, we start n- name calling and doing all of these other kinds of things that break down some of the most important concepts of how we should live our lives. From a mental health point of view, I think it's really detrimental that that we don't have and don't allow ourselves to compromise, hear other opinions, and still and work toward working together, living together. Uh, so the political world has sort of um, uh, really uh, d- just exploded uh, our and challenged us to understand that uh, uh, it, it's challenged people to be in one camp or the other so yeah. with that divide. Yeah. But the greater challenge is where do we have similarities and where do we bridge things together and where can people... I mean, the average American out there could care less about some of all of this new stuff that uh, we are bombarded with constantly, what the president said, for example, or what this congressperson said about right. something. And and uh, w- w- we just want to have a, a good uh, life yeah. in general yeah, and, right. and take care of our kids and raise our kids and go to work and pay our bills and take a vacation and celebrate the 4th of July, <laughs> all of these kinds of mm-hmm. things and in this country. Uh, and the nationalism does that on a much larger scale. What it does is, besides just the political parties, now we're going nation versus nation. Yeah. And that's going to set up a terrible scenario um, and, and that we're not partnering and working with, with other countries. So the nationalism also has some very uh, I'm not sure the word for the, for this, but um, dark uh, beginnings. Uh, if you if you look at that, uh, the tribalism and the nationalism has been connected to some very nefarious, difficult, and harmful um, regimes from the past that is sort of s- associated with that. Um, and it's a two. It's a T- double-edged sword because on the one hand y- you aren't you proud of your country and being a member of this nation uh, and uh, the other side is uh, if you don't then you're with them as I said earlier and it it uh, it, it absolutely provides no opportunity for you to hear the other speak in other words you're so right, encamped right. and so in uh, in 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 turned into this this belief system that there's no way to even consider the others' yep. opinion or views. I think it's very dangerous. I think it's dangerous for individuals. I think it's dangerous for the country to do that as well. But again, these are opinions uh, from me, and that's that's <laughs> that's the only way I know how to answer that question. So, looking at it <clears throat> from the from the a point of view. It uh, uh, from a mental health point of view, it goes against some of the some of the values that we hold for people to be to be congruent in what yeah. you believe and think and act how you act uh, to be empathic and use empathy and understand the other's point of view and to be authentic who you who you are and early on we talked about challenging beliefs that that's part of life that your beliefs get challenged now right. are you going to fight about that every time somebody says something different well that's all about life? growth that's yeah. uh, the child interacting with with the environment and growing because of the feedback that's coming from the environment you touch a stove you get burned well right well uh, yeah or uh, you know any of a number of things where you're learning. You, you know, we're, we're talking about this whole thing about discourse and empathy and that kind of thing. It seems like a lot of the di- discourse right now, anyway, sure. is geared toward outrage. In other words, yeah. that when you turn on any kind of opinion or news or anything, it it depending on the orientation of the 
of the organization the doing yes. that, doing the communicating. Right. Uh, it the reach is always toward outrage. In other words, look at look at what they did. Look at right. what they said. Aren't you angry about that? Aren't you angry yes. about that? And and then the other thing is is maybe almost to me the the co opting of the word evil. They're mm-hmm. evil. Right. Well, that absolves you of a lot of responsibility if 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 the other side is evil, then doesn't that take away their humanity to where that may be a slippery slope we don't want to go down? That's how wars are started. Exactly. In other words, we don't we ascribe every motivation to well, it's just ill will and evil, and why? Well, they're just evil. Well, right. And it not just a, seemed, not a very good explanation in in detail. It just kind of go with the feeling. Yeah. If I if I think of my next door neighbor and say, well, they they didn't cut their grass because they're evil, <laughs> then what happens when there's a neighborhood crisis and I need my next-door neighbor as a, as a friend and helper and ally? Exactly. Well, if, if I've made him evil, then, you know. And, and I think I, I, I'm being sort of silly about the neighborhood no, analogy, no. But, but maybe maybe I'm not being so silly no, because, I don't think so. because right now we're living in a... a giant spaceship hurtling through through (laughs) space and the climate's going south and everyone's stacked nuclear arms well to me there needs to be some cooperation to deal with what seemed to be just really challenging problems that right now i don't see anybody tackling you know yeah that that's a that's that's unfortunate in itself, and and I think you brought up a, a pretty important point that relates to the original question of this this po- political side of things and the nationalism and so forth. It's the use of those emotions of fear that I think is at the s- a core of of some of this. In other words, our group is bonded closer together if we're fearful of the others, and we paint them in a certain way, an inhuman way, as you. You mentioned, and I think that's a that's a very clear way to to put that. the 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 idea of invoking fear in someone, making them afraid, bonds them together in a certain way. So I, I think the the downside of this is that these politicians that we're listening to are using that very effectively with their group. If you want to be with us, you you got to be against the other. And look how terrible they are. Look how inhuman they are. And in wars, and you you would know that the the idea of painting the enemy as evil, uh, as not like us, as evil as bad, and on and on, giving them names and so forth, helps uh, paint that that picture that we need to do something about them because they're not like us, and we should yeah. uh, be angry about that. Not only fearful, but the fear turns into anger, and then that turns into some behavior, and that could lead all the way up to, uh, to Yeah. yeah.